Welcome to today's talk. It's Wednesday the 22nd of November. Now a few days ago we looked at post-vaccine syndrome and we saw that people were reporting symptoms like unease, fearfulness, uh, overwhelming uh, worries, helplessness, anxiety, depression, hopelessness, feelings of worthlessness, things that are related to depressive illness. And uh, we got several thousand comments on this people saying that they have experienced this or know others who have experienced this or are are living with people who who are experiencing this uh, at, at the moment so this is really common so i want to look at this a little bit now now in depressive illness it's uh the symptoms cause distress depression is a horrible horrible uh, illness and it is it is it is an illness and it interferes with people's ability to interact with others and to, to work normally. They're unable to perform normal duties. This can be a real illness and it can come and go and it lasts for more than a couple of weeks at a time, typically. So let's look at some of the features now and how we can uh, recognise this in ourselves and recognise it in others. Just a couple of provisos, really. Make sure that this is not a medical condition, that the patient has something biologically wrong with them. Now, depression can be biological, of course, but what we mean by this is not heart disease or lung disease or kidney disease. And also consider the possibility of substance abuse. If you're drinking huge amounts of alcohol, clearly that's going to affect your mood. So this is in the absence of drug abuse or medical uh, conditions. And of course, always take medical advice The problem that's been bothering me with a lot of medical advice lately is is some doctors are making the most fundamental mistake that you can make in psychiatry and that is, or in medicine really, that is attributing something that is is, uh, biological to something which is psychological, psychogenic. But today we're talking about a psychogenic depressive illness. Now, I find this remarkably useful. This is Public Health Questionnaire PHQ-9. And I'm going to go through the stages in this because it can really help you to um, recognise depression in yourself and in others. And if you are anxious or depressed, for goodness sake, tell someone, don't keep this bottled up, communicate it, seek professional help when appropriate, recognise this in others. If people complain about it to you, listen to them, give them opportunity to express themselves to you, as we mentioned on the last video. So let's look at these uh, criteria. So this is PHQ-9. Now the scores here are from the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. Now this is, these are from four. This is the current version here. Actually, I think there's a six coming out soon. But this is five. So this is, this is the definitive text uh, in, in psychiatric medicine, really. Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. Um, this is what we currently uh, define Uh, psychiatric uh, diagnoses and psychiatric conditions using as far as i know in all english-speaking countries certainly the united states the united kingdom australia this is commonly used so pretty useful anyway um the question is over the last two weeks how often have you been bothered by any of the following problems first one little interest or pleasure in doing things Now, this is called uh, ahedinia, uh, an inability to feel pleasure. So things that you're normally interested in, you just can't be bothered with anymore. Or your partner or your husband or your wife or your son or your daughter or your mother can't be, just can't be bothered anymore. You know, dad's always been interested in football and now he just can't be bothered anymore. Think, is, is this a depressive, is this a depressive feature? Little interest in pleasure or doing things. Just not interested, can't, can't be bothered. Um, next feet I'm, I'm going to tell you how to rate these in a minute as well but that's what to look out for feeling down depressed or hopeless is the next feature sad um, empty hopelessness these sort of horrible feelings is a, are a criteria trouble falling asleep or staying asleep or sleeping too much so insomnia is a really common problem um, now um, I've unfortunately you work with many people who have been depressed um i've been depressed myself and i of course taught um, students about treating and managing depression o- o- over decades and uh difficulty sleeping is a really common one and as the depression starts to lift 
then very often the depression will lift as well. Now, when someone's in depression, they really feel that the situation is hopeless. And if you come alongside someone when they're depressed and, and you, you, you help them realistically, not everything's going to be fine. You have to empathise with them appropriately, but spend time with that person, listen to them. At the time, they might think it's hopeless, but afterwards, when they improve, they will really appreciate what you've done. It is so important, that human contact. But sleep is an important one. And what, what I find, personally, when, when I was uh, depressed, was I could get to sleep all right because I was so tired, because being depressed is actually quite hard work. But then I'd wake up at three o'clock in the morning and not be able to get back to sleep again. And then, of course, you're tired all the next day and we get into this kind of vicious circle. So that's a common, very common uh, feature. Um, feeling tired or having very little energy. Of course, this can be biological, but it's also a feature of depression. Poor appetite or overeating. Well, when you're depressed or anxious, which category are you in? Especially if you're depressed, do you overeat or do you undereat? Personally, I don't feel hungry and I can actually lose, lose some weight the times I've been depressed. Um, other people um, eat to compensate. The rule of thumb here is, is there a change of about 5% in body weight over a month? That would be concerning. Um, so uh, people that overeat, have they gained 5% in the month? People that undereat, uh, have they lost 5% in the month? Would be a reasonable uh, sort of uh, adjudication criteria. Next point to look out for that you can mark yourself on. Uh, feeling bad about yourself or that you are a failure or have let yourself or your family down. Um, excessive inappropriate guilt can come into this. Feelings of worthlessness, that you've let people down. You know, there's all these people relying on me to do this and I've just completely let them down. I failed in my duty. Now, it's probably not true, but that is the feeling that you have. And part of this whole thing in depression is that there's a dissociation with reality so you might have helped people for all your life then when you're depressed you think i haven't helped people i've been hopeless i've been useless i've failed in my duties even though you might have been very successful this is part of a uh, depressive illness that we can recognize in ourselves and uh, and in others um Trouble concentrating on things such as reading the newspaper or watching television. Uh, inability to think. Um, an another common thing here is people can't make their mind up, sort of indecisiveness. You can't kind of rely on your own cognitive processes. You can't rely on your thinking as you have done perhaps uh, all your life as far as you can remember. Moving or speaking so slowly that other people could have noticed. So this is, uh, if you're moving or speaking slowly, that's called uh, psychomotor uh, retardation. Or the opposite of your fidgety, uh, psychomotor uh, agitation. So again, people can go either way. So this is just one criteria, really. So some people have this psychomotor retardation. Everything happens slowly. They talk slowly. They think slowly. They move slowly. Other people, they've got ants in their pants and they're agitated. And again, I'm, I'm sure you can recognise this in yourself. Personally, when I'm depressed, I go slow. My thinking is slow. My movement is slow. My speech becomes slow. Speech becomes hard work. Other people, it's almost like an overcompensation, but they, they go completely the other way. So again, it is someone much more talkative than, the, than they used to be. And another feature that's often not on these criteria it's kind of related to this, but um, change in people's emotional disposition. So if someone's angry more than they used to be, um, times I've been depressed, I'm predisposed to irritation and, uh, and anger in ways that I, I simply wouldn't be uh, normally. Um, so if someone's shouting, shouting you down every day at work, biting your head off every time you say something, when they haven't done that in the past, don't retaliate. Think, why are they doing this? Because this can be a depressive feature. It's something we can look out for, raise the possibility of this existing. And then, of course, when we raise the possibility that it exists, we can do these tests, we can 
treat it, we can go to professionals, we can get a diagnosis and then we can do some treatment. We can improve insight. Um, it's very important to understand that you are depressed or people around you are depressed and then we can make appropriate allowances. That's really important rather than just saying, well, they've gone on a really bad temper, haven't they? There could be a deeper reason behind it. Um, thoughts that you would be better off dead or hurting yourself in some way. Um, recurrent thoughts of death, overthinking about death, sometimes excessive fear of death, or suicidal ideation, thinking of suicide. Sometimes suicidal ideation is just, the ideas of suicide is just thinking, you know, I'd be better off dead. It'd be better off if I wasn't here. Now, that's not true, but that's the way you think. Other times it's specific. People can have a specific plan. Well, you know, what I could do to end my life is A, B and C. You could have a particular plan. I've had people come to me and say, John, uh, can you tell me how to cut my carotid artery, please? Literally that. They have a specific idea um, of, of how they would do that. Other times it's just a general idea that they'd like to or think they wouldn't want to be here anymore. But of course, suicide happens when the balance of the mind is disturbed by definition. So there's nine criteria there that are really quite useful. Now, um, this is on this screening test here, as we've said. And here's the uh, criteria. And uh, you can mark yourself. Now, what we have here actually is um, criteria. Um, not at all. Um, so that would rate a zero, obviously. Uh, several days. And remember, we're talking about over the past uh, past two weeks. That would give you a one. And more than half the days will give you a two and uh, nearly uh, nearly every day will give you a three. And it's the same for each of these. So little interest or pleasure in doing things is that not at all. Several days in the last two weeks, more than half of the days in the last two weeks, nearly every day in the last uh, two weeks. And you would do the same for feeling down, depressed, sad or hopeless. Uh, you, you, you would use those same uh, those same criteria for that and then when you've done that you would add up to a, a scale and if you got three for every one that would be 27 hopefully you wouldn't but if you did that's what it would be you end up with a number and uh, this gives you a depressive severity score naught to four would be no depression which is ideal five to nine would be mild depression uh, 10 to 14 would be moderate depression which is worse uh, moderately severe would be uh, 15 to uh, 19 and 20 to 27 would be a, a severe uh, a severe depression. All features may be self-reported or observed by others. It's useful if you can do this with someone else because they often know you. Someone you live with, for example, or someone you work with, someone you trust got to be a confidant you can do this uh, together and then you doing it together is really useful and then the other thing i found useful was um if you do score in in the depressive range you do score in the depressive range then um, as you start to improve and start to take treatment and uh, get better it's useful to and, and, and really I, quite encouraging, I, I found this, that as you uh, get better, you find your score goes down. So to monitor yourself, to use this as a trend, is also really quite a uh, quite, quite useful thing to do. Um, in assess so this is for major, uh, this is for major depression that we're looking at here. Now, th th this is actually a very useful uh, scale. The sensitivity here is 88%. Picks up 88% of cases would give false negative in 12%. And the specificity is the same, 88%. Uh, gives a false positive in 12% uh, of the time. And, and this actually is, is as good as being interviewed by a, a mental health professional. So it's actually pretty good uh, diagnostic test. Now, there is uh, 
a d- disclaimer on here that's on this uh, on the website here. This is designed for use by um, healthcare professionals. Um, yeah, there it is. There it tells you. Anyway, let, let's just um, point that out because it is very important to get help if you are very depressed. Um, it says, please know that this questionnaire is not designed for people to complete without any input from their healthcare professional. Uh, please contact your doctor if you are concerned about your mood or have completed this questionnaire and indicates that you may be depressed. If you have any thoughts of self-harm, please read our leaflet on dealing with suicidal thoughts, which gives advice on all the help that is available. And I'll put the link to that uh, just there, but it is linked via the initial uh, website. So um, these depressive features were reported as a post-COVID vaccine, part of the post-COVID vaccine syndrome. Um, Many of you are saying they have become more prevalent of late, but of course these are common depressive features that we've known about for years. Depression is an illness and it can be treated. There are things we can do to help it. So just a few things here. Um, Think about your nutrition especially this time of year in the northern hemisphere think about your vitamin d levels get those optimized get your doctor to check your vitamin d levels if you can and also vitamin b is important people that are deficient in vitamin b12 for example can be uh, perhaps can be more uh, depressed thinking about nutrition as well gut health the gut brain access eat a large variety of uh, vegetables and fruits and plants and uh, nutritious foods Think about uh, omega-3 things and uh, just just nutritious, good quality food, preferably that you make yourself. Making food can be quite therapeutic and avoid ultra-processed foods which reduce the quality of the gut microbiome and do make you feel worse. There's no question about that in my mind at all. Do consider uh, adequate amounts of exercise within your medical abilities. Exercise is important. Sleep hygiene and um, discipline is important. Don't stop. Do what I do. Don't potter around till half past 12 or 1 o'clock in the morning. Go to bed at a sensible time. Read a book. Turn down the the blue lights. Um, You know, just generally calm yourself down, ready for bed. Avoid caffeine and alcohol in the evenings, the usual things. Socialise. Talk to people. Let people know how you feel. Listen to how those around you are feeling. And of course, talking therapies can be appropriate. Remember, people are bio-psychosocial spiritual beings. So if you have a spiritual practice, then spiritual practice is is, uh, is, is part of being human. People all over the world have spiritual practices. Drugs don't... Be aware of drugs as being dangerous. Alcohol is a depression, depressive drug can't imagine smoking much cannabis is good for you opiates of course bad any drug basically that you take for the buzz for the psychotropic effect is going to turn around and bite you in the ankle pretty soon bear that in mind medication is sometimes appropriate do report to your healthcare professional always of course and uh, in my experience, antidepressants do work. I've seen them work many, many times. I've taken a course of antidepressants myself and did find them to be helpful. The trouble is with the antidepressant drugs that we now use, the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, is they make you worse typically before they make you better. So it can be quite hard work. And uh, certainly uh, avoid benzodiazepines, the Valium type drugs, uh, as far as possible, unless specifically prescribed by your doctor for a short period of time. So think about yourself as this holistic creature. Talk you're a holistic being. Mind, body, soul, all work together. And let people know. Talk to people. Be aware of this in those around you. Sometimes you see these symptoms. Other times you can get what you call a smiling depression where people feel there's something wrong so they overcompensate. It's called a smiling depression. So change in mood. Just be aware that, that depression is, is common, uh, but manageable, needs to be recognised, can be treated. If you're currently depressed, and that's the reason some of you are watching this video, um, you can get dramatically better. Uh, depression is nearly always temporary. People get better dramatically so, and then they look back on that dark period 
and any help that you can give people when they're depressed, they will really appreciate that, even though they can't express their gratitude at the time due to the depressive illness. So it's real, but it's manageable, it's treated, but it needs to be recognised. And uh, fill out that and uh, see if that helps you. Um, and uh, we'll look at anxiety as a separate topic. I don't think I'll do that now, but um, that, that was depression. Uh, anxiety can often go with depression, but we'll look at that as a separate topic. So for now, uh, thank you for watching. Listen to those around you and help those around you.